Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by USA Rice, Sunsweet, Hodgson Mill, and the generous support of... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. I love cooking, and cooking and eating with friends is really the ultimate. Ooh, we're good. Today we're in Napa, California, with Cooks and Books, a cooking club that samples a different cookbook every month. The theme today, which is so sweet of you all, is gourmet magazine recipes. And I happen to have worked there for 25 years. What are we making now? We are going to make a shrimp tikka with fresh mango chutney. Okay, so an yeah. Indian dish. And then a Spanish chicken dish with chicken thighs and prunes, olives, almonds, and cherry. Beautiful, doesn't it? It does. Oh, it's gonna be so tasty. I agree, and this is a dish I'll make at home. Oh, yay. But there are other cooking clubs. For example, there's an all boys club that is fascinating, the Barbecue Pit Boys. It smells good. That it does. And when a cooking club becomes an eating club, the fun begins. <laughs> it's all coming up today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Lots of us are in book clubs. Others join cooking clubs. Angela Bortugno does both. Her club samples recipes from a different cookbook every month, and today I'm an unofficial member. The cookbooks are from Gourmet Magazine, where I worked for 25 years. I, I thought that this really funny old gourmet cookbook. Look at that, isn't that That's a riot? Great. Yeah, we're gonna make something out. Are you ready? I'm I ready got to cook. This cool chicken dish. making a Spanish chicken dish today with chicken thighs and prunes, olives, almonds, and cherry. And I adapted it from a gourmet recipe that had raisins in it. Uh, we're gonna start with a third of a cup of prunes that we macerate in sherry for about an hour. Can you measure me a third of a cup sure. of dry sherry? And uh, we're using chicken thighs. The original had cut up chicken. Just cause chicken thighs are so forgiving and dark meat has more flavor and it's so much juicier. So we just chop these guys a little bit to spread the wealth. Do the prunes help add some juiciness to the Well, they'll the I think they'll add depth of flavor because they're natural sugar. Oh, by the way, my little trick, I oiled the uh, knife so that they didn't oh. stick. Um, and I think they'll add a nice depth of flavor from their sweetness. Go ahead, and they're, they're sort of almost toasty, you know, in their flavor. Um, we go. They do have sort of a meaty quality they to do, them. They do, they do. I mean, and besides the other things like they're high in fiber, I mean, they're good for you. All right, let's make the marinade. We're gonna put in um, a teaspoon of garlic, one garlic clove chopped. We need some orange juice, a quarter of a cup. A fresh squeezed would be nice, but you don't have to. A quarter cup of cilantro chopped and a half a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna blend it, and then we're gonna pour it over the chicken in the bag. It's gonna be noisy. Uh, don't we love that color? It's beautiful. Also, I love the orange juice in there. Well, and the orange juice Ooh, helps make- smells good. Helps make it Spanish, right? Because oranges are from Sevilla. Yes, and, very right. true. I mean, if you had lemon, it would be maybe a different- You must be a member of a cookbook or... club. <laughs> yes. You seem to know what you're talking about. Okay, so you're gonna massage that to make sure it's nice and mixed around. Okay, so okay. that goes in the fridge for about an hour. And we're gonna toast our almonds. I'm gonna pop this in a 350 oven for, I don't know, about five, six minutes. Uh, why don't you get the marinated chicken? We have some that we already marinated for an hour. We'll pat it dry. I'm gonna get our flour. Alrighty, I've got my pan going here. We're gonna put some olive oil in there. 
So tell me, how many people are in your group? Oh. So there are between 14 and 16. Wow. I can't remember where we are right now. And mm -hmm. it's pretty much the original group. We started in 2005. And wow. um, a couple have dropped out for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. And we have one new member in all that time. And we are We've all become really close friends. Now, but to become a member, do you have to have certain culinary chops, or can you just no, be anybody? No, not at all. I'm a home cook, and most of us are, but there are some food writers, a couple of food historians, a cooking Ooh, teacher, we're getting a ready. photographer. Wanna, uh, yeah. We're going to dredge it in the flour, just to give it a little extra coating there, and then we'll put it right in, skin side down. So you have all different kinds of people. We do. Uh, one of them's a food photographer. I'm the only one that's in the wine business, but it's fun to have a nice diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, we uh, got a lot of interest from people that heard about the club, and we just didn't have room, so we didn't, didn't take any new members. We're going to saute this chicken for about eight minutes total, four minutes on each side till it's nicely brown. All right, let's drain the prunes. And we're going to save that yummy sherry. Good. And everything is going to go in there. It oh, is wow. Fun. Look at that nice color we're getting. Beautiful. What have you learned in this club? Tell me some of the things you've learned. The first time around, we always follow the recipe. I so agree. And we also don't double the recipe, even though there are up to 16 people sometimes. We, there are enough of us that we could just chop everything, proportion it out so that we all, we all get plenty of food. Okay, I, th I think these are ready to come out. Oh, you want to check the almonds. Oh, yes. Ah! They look beautiful. They sure do. Here's our sherry. I'm going to add this. Ready? When you have high alcohol, Take it off the burner because you don't want to be standing here and have it catch fire. And then I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. Okay. We'll just get this up to temperature. And then we're going to add the chicken and the olives and the prunes. Oh, this is going to be so good. Yum, yum. It looks great. You don't want to waste any of this good stuff. So there we go. I turned off the flame because I don't want to boil the chicken. I just wanted to get the stock up to temperature. So now, of course, the prunes. So those are just green olives, like Spanish green olives, uh, which are perfect in here. So we've got all our nice ingredients. So I'm going to put this in the oven for about 20 minutes to open the door. And then we're going to go on out and have a glass of wine and chat. That sounds good. While it cooks. This is a local wine I, I found. It's a dry rosé. Well, I am just amazed at the popularity of rosé all yeah. of a sudden. Um, I love these cookbooks. These are the oldest gourmet cookbooks. Like what, the 50s, you They're think? They're from the 50s, and my mother gave me these books. Do you ever use really old cookbooks? We've used the art, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Julia Child's cookbook. Oh my god. One of the oldest ones. Lobster bisque, 11 pages later? I don't think so. It's, Butter was in almost every Beginning, recipe. middle, and end. Yes, absolutely. But they're some of my favorite recipes. I, I know that if I cook something out of one of Julia Child's cookbooks that I'm going to have a great It's going to work. It's going to work. Yes. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Napa Valley. Thank you. OK, so I think it must be ready. Yes. So let's see. I'm going to just uh, feel it to see if it's firm, because that's how we'll know it's done. Oh boy, doesn't that smell wonderful Smells and look wonderful. wonderful? Oh gosh. Oh, this looks gorgeous. Let's transfer it to the platter. You want to pass me the butter over here and there? And we'll just let this melt. Give it a nice richness. Okay, so I'm going to pour this over the top. You want to move the tongs, and then we'll sprinkle on the almonds, and we'll garnish it with some, some cilantro. cilantro. Yeah. Beautiful, doesn't it? It does. Oh, it's going to be so tasty. You want to do the almonds, and pass me the cilantro, and I'll do the cilantro. Yeah. 
this. I think I'll just do pieces. What do you think? I'm glad we didn't add the almonds to yeah, the Yeah, because they're nice and they're crunchy. Nice and crunchy. Wow, I think that looks beautiful. It is beautiful. I think they're gonna love it. I think we did great. I agree, and this is a dish I'll make at home. Oh, yay, with our improvements. <laughs> yes, with our improvements. So Angela is a member of this kind of cookbook club, but there are other cooking clubs. For example, there's an all boys club that is fascinating, the Barbecue Pit Boys. I think since the caveman days when men were out getting the dinosaurs, the first thing they would do is, of course, butcher the dinosaur and eat it right there, wherever they got it. So uh, I would say men have the DNA for meat and fire. Fire, meat, cook, eat. Bob Algren and his friends are experts, and their half million fans must agree. In a world of cat videos and skateboard stunts, at 65, Bob is an unlikely YouTube star. Welcome to BarbecuePitBoys.com! It was like Hutu, right? At the time, nobody, uh, nobody had any clue what they were, but they gave you free space to store your videos. So I uploaded videos of uh, how to cook on grills we had here. And uh, the next thing you know, I got a check in the mail for like 50 bucks and go, what? for watching YouTube videos. So I said, that's cool, you know? The Barbecue Pit Boys, a bunch of his friends grilling in the backyard, became a phenomenon. 100 million views in the top 1% of YouTube's videos. They decided to put me on the homepage along uh, with Bobby Flay. And it turned out uh, nobody was watching Bobby Flay, but everybody was watching the Barbecue Pit Boys. And today, of course, the YouTube homepage is worth millions of dollars to advertise. And I just get up one morning and I see literally thousands and thousands of emails and messages from fans saying, oh, we love the Pit Boys. Over the years, they've cooked some crazy stuff. Alligator, three pigs. On today's menu, pigeons. And then Bob with an all-time favorite. Today we're gonna do a beer can bacon burger, and it's real easy to do. This is what you got here. We got a couple pounds of ground chuck. We're gonna form this meatball around this beer can right here. Then we got ourselves some regular cut bacon. This, pull it out, and what you end up with, Slice a little pot. So excuse my hands, but this is the pit. I'm gonna get this roast beef hash in here. And here we've got the roast beef, the mushroom gravy going right here, the steak. And then we're gonna top it off with a little bit of pepper jack cheese. And if you've been watching this over the years in the Pit Boys, and this is our ninth year, we'll be going into our tenth year, we do a lot of this indirect grilling. So we're gonna place this beer can bacon burger opposite the hot coals. Probably the most popular burger in the world right now. We got six million hits. That burger begat a dynasty. What started in a Connecticut backyard brought the world to Bob's door. There are now over 7,500 barbecue pit boys chapters in 100 countries. I think it's brotherhood camaraderie. Wow, that's really good. Cook barbecue and food and, and hang with our friends. And that's what it's about. Uh, we're not about competitions. Come on, Chase, grab a piece of roast beef. Life is short, you know, so you want to enjoy every minute if you can. You smell that? It smells good. Yeah. Barbecue pit boys for life. I'm cooking today with the Napa Valley Cooks and Books Club. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm here with my new buddy, Claudia Santone. And we are making yet another recipe. The theme today, which is so sweet of you all, mm. is gourmet magazine recipes. And I happen to have worked there for 25 years. <laughs> And we are having fun adapting recipes from that, that magazine. What are we making now? We are going to make a shrimp tikka with fresh mango chutney. Okay, so an yeah. Indian dish. Yeah. And I'm getting this ginger Ooh, ready. And I'm getting to wear the lime juice. Yes, you are. It's we both so are. Good. It smells so good. Yeah. And right. isn't this fun that we get to do this together, Sarah? I know. And I guess that's sort of the point of your group is uh -huh. cooking together. Do yeah, you cook together do. or do you all just bring Actually, it Actually, we, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all going every which way but loose. 
We've had a great time doing this. We're going to start with a quarter cup of vegetable oil. This is for the, the marinade for the shrimp. All right, so we're going to dump this. Uh -huh. And then we're going to put two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. I love lime juice. juice. I do too. It just seems like it should have tequila or something in it, oh, I think. Okay. <laughs> I like the way you think. All right, and then my ginger. This is a one inch piece that I did. peeled and chopped. Okay, yep. good. Perfect, throw it in. Okay. And then we're going to use a clove of garlic. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to put in two teaspoons of fresh jalapeno. All right. Be I sure understand. you don't rub your eyes after this. Right, this is true. We did leave the ribs and seeds in. Okay, we're gonna add some turmeric. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm -hmm. this I think is the mystery ingredient in this recipe because it's an easy recipe to make but it has such depth, and I think it's because of this, the garam masala. It's a spice mix that varies according to the family in India that makes it, uh, but it generally has coriander and black peppercorns and chilies and, oh. Cinnamon. Yes, and you can buy pre-made mixes, and we'll have one on the website that you can make if you don't want to buy it, you can make your own. So anyway, in that goes. Okay, half teaspoon of salt. Yeah. This is what's going to help the marinade to penetrate the shrimp and really flavor it, because if you didn't have that, it wouldn't go in the same way. Okay, so there we go. That's probably pretty good. All right, so into this bag. Okay, let me make sure I get that all in there. Okie dokie. So now we're gonna just distribute this on the bottom and we're going to take the shrimp. We've taken the shell off, but right. we left the tail so that right. it's gonna be easy to pick up. Right, and also uh, a good idea is to save the shrimp shells, keep them in the mm. freezer, and then when you've got enough, you can make a really nice stock. That's if you What know, a good idea. Well, it is, because you know, I hate that clam juice. It's oh, so yeah. salty. But you can make a beautiful fish stock with just shrimp shells. Okay, so this really only needs to marinate for about 30 minutes. Okay. And it doesn't have to be refrigerated. Because so, it's only 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, in that time we can, um, mm -hmm. we can make our chutney. Okay. Okay, for the chutney, I have to show you this. We're going to toast some cumin. What is that? Is this that the cutest thing? That looks like a popcorn thing? popper. You know, <laughs> yeah, like from days. Yeah, like, but popcorn. three pieces of popcorn will yeah, fit into yeah. this. This is for roasting nuts, um, Pine spices. nuts. Spices. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, we have um, some cumin right here. I love gadgets. Where, yeah. did, where did you get that? I found that? it, and actually it was a gift from friends of ours from Chinatown. They thought it was so cool, they brought it to my house, and it's like my little treasure. Oh. But you know, it cooks really fast. Okay. It's not like putting it in a Skillet. cast iron. Yeah. Okay, so let's turn this on. So we're gonna put it on low because this metal is so thin. It goes quickly. It goes quickly. So, so you wait till you start smelling it. Yeah. And then you'll eventually see some smoke, and that's the time to get it off right away. I see it, the smoke. Yeah, I see the smoke. It Look burns in no time. Wow. Yeah. And that so is, the, I want one of those. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to China. You know what? I'm gonna bequeath this to you. No, you're not. So I don't ever want you to burn a pine nut again in no, your life. No, those are so expensive. I know. Yeah, okay. Well, let's grab that bowl. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Do you believe the strength of that smell once oh, it's roasted? It's perfume. Yeah, it makes all the difference. Okay, so this is where we're going to put our, all the rest of our yes, chutney ingredients. Yes, exactly. What, you want me to do the mango here? Yeah, if you'll start the mango, I'll do the cucumbers. And we want an unripe mango, right? Yeah, otherwise so, they're too mushy. And I'm um, going to do sort of the old-fashioned, peel the whole thing first because this is unripe, and I think it will be easier for me to cut it up this way. So this is the whole basic foundation of our chutney. The rest of you the want to put the rest of the jalapeno in. How much is it? About another two teaspoons? Mm -hmm, it is. I think we have three tablespoons of lime juice. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, salt. And we just add this to taste, right? Yes. And the onion, right? Mm -hmm. Also. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? So we have about a quarter of a cup of mint, just chiffonade okay. that will go in. Let's see how we like this. But look at the colors. Is this is just yeah. so beautiful. This makes me happy. Yeah, it makes me happy too. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, it's good. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Look at us. Mmm. Good. Okay. So let's park that, and now we're ready for the shrimp, yeah. right? Yeah. If you would bring the skewers over here, and would you mind getting that glass right. dish? Right. So we soak these, the idea being that so they won't yes. burn when we put them on the grill. So we soak them for a couple hours or whatever. We could use metal, too. So we're going to line these up like the Rockettes. You yeah. want to do one and show me? Okay. How you've done it before. So I just put it to the bottom mm -hmm. and through here. And just line them up, and we're going to put four per skewer. Four per. Okay. Yeah. And leave some space in between so they don't steam. Yes, I see that. Okay. All right. We'll put the skewers over here. Great. And we can both work together. Yeah, and you can see it's not a difficult okay, recipe to make. No, not at all. But the flavor is so intense. Mm -hmm. It looks like you've labored endlessly to put this together. Oh, well, that's my favorite kind. Me too. So you look like a culinary genius. Yeah, but I you think. Spend wow. Not too much time. Yeah, that's right. Look Whoa, what she she's made. She's a good cook. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Little do they know. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's time to get these puppies on the grill, don't you? Yes. So what do you think? We just do it straight across. Yeah, yeah there are 10 of them. Yep. Okay. Oh, they Ooh. didn't stay in there. If we had the double skewers, they, of course, would stay. Yes. Why didn't I think of that? So about four minutes? Yeah, about four minutes. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, Sarah, let's dress this little pumpkin up. Okay. I'll put the lime, you put the mint. Look at that mint. You always call it a bow, right? Yes, yes. It's like the bow in the little girl's hair. Yeah. Yeah, our guests are going to be coming soon, so they are going to just be elated. Yes. Number one, to have you here, and number two, to eat this delicious oh, meal. Oh, they're going to love it. Gorgeous. Oh, this is going to be I so much fun. Olive Orchard. This is Napa Valley at its finest. Oh, hello. Hello, Hello. Hello. I've got our chicken dish. So this is uh, red wine braised uh, chicken thighs with chorizo and chickpeas. Oh, and chickpeas. he still my beating heart. Trident. Oh, my gosh. I love this. We got to drink local. We got to drink local. Why wouldn't you? Yes. Oh, hello. Hi. I brought my tonado. Uh, you know, my favorite way to eat is to have little tasting. So you guys are smart to do this. Okay. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, Annie yeah. Baker, the queen of the bakers. You're the cookie lady, <laughs> Annie right? Yes. I don't know what to start with first. Dessert first. Oh, right. <laughs> Life is short. Right. You have dessert first. I like the way you think. Thank you. Thank you all for letting me into your happy little home. Oh, yeah. Here's to the cooks and books yeah. group. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm excited about the chorizo. Just dig in. Yeah, oh, you yeah. do? Salad has gorgeous. Isn't it always avocado season in California? After 14 years of this, we all need to go on a Cooks and Books diet. <laughs> <laughs> what would that look like? Pasta? <laughs> The appetizer is the, the eggplant tonado salad. So that means it has a tuna sauce? It has a tuna sauce in it and uh, crunchy breadcrumbs. But Just it's yummy. Nice, yeah. Mm. Well, my salad has oranges that are in season right now and really delicious. And the dressing is an Asian dressing, and I, even though it can get more exciting. It's good so thinking. fresh. It's really good. It goes really nicely with the shrimp. Mm. The yes, yes. We had fun making this. We did. Mm. Us fellow shrimps. Yeah, shrimp. <laughs> yeah that's yes. right. We're the shrimps. It's a shrimp tiki with fresh mango chutney. Mm, it's delicious. I thought the recipe worked really well, didn't you? Yes, and um, we also, I have to say, I just made a decision you were a spicy group. So we put <laughs> in the upper level of jalapeno. Yeah, we are. Mm. Thank you for the warning. I'm a wimp. <laughs> 
This is a red wine braised uh, chicken thighs with chorizo and chickpeas. And anything that says chorizo, probably good. good. I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful flavor. Just spicy enough. Yeah. Okay. That's the maximum level. <laughs> <laughs> so this is chicken with prunes and olives and almonds. I didn't even notice there were prunes in this. No, they're this je ne sais quoi. They're giving it that mm. So I know it's not time yet, but do we get to talk about dessert? Oh yeah, we can talk about dessert. Because boy, it's right there and I it's know. gorgeous. And this is hilarious. Look, Gourmet Magazine, wow. the same dessert yours, on the cover. Yours looks better. Oh, the <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I'd like to make a toast to the Cooks and Books Club. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me into your little secret society. society. Yeah, right. right. Society. Secret society. Secret society. Yeah. Secret society. <laughs> okay, there we go. For recipes and videos, go to our website, sarahmolton.com. Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by USA Rice, Sunsweet, Hodgson Mill, and the generous support of. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals.